Having trouble realizing true-to-life color in your photos? I'll walk you through a photo edit to give you some ideas and help point you in the right direction. Let's get started. I'm using Affinity Photo version 2.1.1. Here's a photo of a reproduction of a beautiful woodblock print by a Japanese artist whose name I won't try to pronounce. It's just a cutout from an old calendar that I've taped to a bookshelf for decoration. Forgive me for not framing it or taking the time to cut it out properly. My goal is to make the photo look as much like the actual cutout as possible, but it'll take more than simply adjusting color. Achieving a faithful reproduction also involves getting contrast and brightness just right, as well as white balance. As you can see, the colors look flat and faded, and the image overall is a bit dark. I'll begin with contrast. I like to use a curves adjustment for that. I'll first change the blend mode to luminosity to avoid altering color. I only want to adjust lightness to add more depth and contrast. There's no set formula here, just have to play it by eye. The right side represents highlights, the middle midtones, and the left side shadows. I'm aiming for a faithful reproduction, so it has to be realistic. To brighten the image further, I'll add a levels adjustment. Again, I'm looking to increase brightness without affecting color, so I'll first set the blend mode to luminosity. Taking a look at the histogram, you can see that there is some empty space on the right side. The right side of the histogram represents lighter tones or highlights, and the left side darker tones or shadows. That empty space on the right indicates that the image is not as bright as it can be. The left side, on the other hand, shows that the photo is not lacking in darker tones, and increasing the black level will probably darken it too much. I'll add some lighter tones to increase brightness. I'll do that by moving the white level slider to the left. While doing so, I'll hold the Option key or Alt key in Windows down. With the Option or Alt key held down, I'll begin slowly moving the slider to the left. The image has become solid white because I'm holding the Option or Alt key down. As I move it farther left, you'll notice some darker areas appearing. That means some highlights are becoming blown out or turning pure white, which results in detail loss. To avoid that, I'll move the slider back towards the right until the dark areas disappear. That will brighten up the image without destroying any detail. I'll release the Option or Alt key to see the photo again. That looks good, so I'll close the levels adjustment. The image looks cold, as though it's under harsh fluorescent light. The photo was taken in natural light of late summer, however, so the fluorescent effect indicates the white balance is off. Proper white balance is necessary for accurate color. To correct it, I'll add a white balance adjustment. Moving the white balance slider to the right will warm up the image, and moving it to the left will cool it down. The image is too cold, so I'll move the slider to the right. I'll take my time and do it slowly. That looks about right. There's also a tint slider. As with the white balance slider, moving it to the right will add a warm tint, and moving it to the left will add a cool tint. A handy tip. Double-clicking a slider handle will set it to its default position. Since I'm trying to warm this up to match natural lighting, I'll move the slider to the right. Again, I'll do it slowly until it looks about right. That's looking much better. Having corrected white balance, I'm now ready to tackle color head-on. I'll use the Selective Color Adjustment, since it allows me to adjust a specific color in isolation without affecting other colors. It also allows for fine-tuning of colors. As I'm trying to make this as accurate a representation as possible, these are useful features to have. But you can use the HSL Adjustment instead if you like, and you can even use both. Blue is a big part of this image, so I'll begin with the blue color channel. I'll start with the cyan slider. The cutout on my bookshelf has a rich indigo hue which I'm trying to match. I'll try changing magenta to see what effect that has.
I'll do yellow now, again aiming for a rich indigo. And I'll darken it by increasing black. Not quite the indigo hue of the original just yet. I'll try adjusting the cyan channel. I'll increase the cyan slider. Magenta looks best at its default. I'll do yellow. And now black. Okay, looking very good. Now I'll switch to the yellow color channel to work on the canary. I'll reduce cyan. That should intensify yellow. Magenta is not looking right, so I'll double click its slider handle to reset it to zero. I'll increase yellow. That's looking good. I'm comparing it to the cutout on my bookshelf and it's looking pretty close. I'll try lightening it just a bit by moving the black slider to the left. All right, that's pretty darn close. Now I'll work on red to get the edges of the flower petals right. Cyan and red are complementary colors, so moving the cyan slider to the left will intensify red. I'll increase magenta as well. I'll increase yellow. The petals in the cutout have a warm, slightly orange color. That's what I'm going for. That's looking great. The bookshelf in the background is too saturated, so I'll try turning down the black slider to lighten it up. Okay, looking very good. There's some green in the leaves, so I'll switch to the green color channel. To enhance green, I'll reduce the magenta slider since magenta and green are complementary colors. I'll play with the cyan slider. I'm trying to match the green to the actual cutout. I'll try yellow now, trying to get it just right. I'll increase black just a bit. That looks good. There's some black on the canary's wings and the Japanese writing on the right side is black as well. I'll switch to the black channel to bring those out a bit more. Just moving the black slider a tiny bit to the right does the trick. I'll switch to the white channel. There's only off-white here, but I'll see what increasing white looks like. I'll move the black slider to the left. That looks great. It's very close, but the blue is still not quite right. It doesn't quite have the richness of the actual cutout I'm looking at. Perhaps a vibrance adjustment would help. I'll turn up the vibrance. That's looking great. To finish, I'll sharpen up the photo with a high-pass live filter. I'll set the radius to one pixel and change the blend mode to overlay. I'll call this done. It's very close. 100% accuracy is unattainable in my opinion. 
All you can really do is try to get as close to the original as possible. I'll select everything and turn it off and on so you can see the difference all the adjustments have made. I suppose I could spend more time on this to improve it a tiny bit more, but I don't think it's worth the effort. Don't be afraid, by the way, to go back and make additional adjustments to all the layers you've added. I can always further tweak the white balance and selective color adjustment layers, for example. I hope this video provided you with some helpful tips on working with color. Thank you for watching.